The Lotus Evora S. It comes from a car company that always seems to be on the brink of bankruptcy. It is the engine from a Toyota Camry, and it's British, so it might catch on fire at any time. When you consider all of these things, you'd probably think that this doesn't sound like a very good car, but it is a very good car. And today, I'm going to prove that to you. I'm going to start with the Evora's strongest asset, its Camry engine. I know what you're thinking, who would take the engine from the most common mid-sized sedan in the country, the car dads use to drive their kids to soccer practice and stick it in a Lotus? But it's smart because a Lotus engine would use unique parts, it would be complicated, it probably wouldn't be properly tested. Frankly, a Lotus engine wouldn't really be reliable. But the Camry engine powers one of the most notoriously reliable cars of all time, and it means that parts will always be available, even if Lotus inevitably succumbs to bankruptcy. Most importantly, it's pretty quick. It sends this thing zero to 60 in about four seconds. So it's reliable and fast. That's one of the Evora's most unique quirks because you wouldn't expect a Lotus to be reliable and you wouldn't expect something with a Camry engine to be fast. But the Evora is both of those things and its unique quirks and features don't stop there. So I'm gonna show you around the Evora and I'm gonna show you everything that makes it so special. And then I'm gonna take it out on the road. And I should mention that this Evora comes to me from a viewer in Florida. And of course, for more of my thoughts on the Evora and the Evora driving experience, click the link below to check out my column on autotrader.com slash oversteer. One of my favorite quirks about this car is and will always be the crazy Lotus key. That little Lotus logo at the top, that's actually a button. Push it and it locks the doors. Now, there are also two other unlabeled buttons on this key fob. This one here unlocks the doors and this one opens the trunk, but only if you push it twice. Why don't they just put labels on them? I don't know, that's Lotus. Now, in the front of the Evora, you won't find a second trunk like you would in a Boxster or a Cayman. And most Evora owners will tell you that the front doesn't open, but that's not strictly true. Using a little latch hidden way under the center of the dashboard that nobody would ever think to look for, you can actually open this little bit, which has places where you can add washer fluid and brake fluid. You can also keep stuff here that you don't really want anybody to find because they'll never know to look for it in this place. And even if they did, they'd never know how to get to it. Unless of course they saw this video. Now, in the back of an Evora, you'll find both the trunk and the engine. The trunk is surprisingly large, and there's a little cargo net in there to keep stuff from sliding around. But I think more interesting is the engine. Although there's an engine cover on this engine, like in most exotic cars, and they don't want their owners to get in there and touch stuff and screw stuff up, Lotus knows that their owners are a lot more likely than the average sports car owner to want to get in there and tweak stuff. So, once you've opened the hood, there are a couple more latches. You can open the engine cover and then do whatever you want to the engine. Another crazy quirk about the Evora is all of its weirdly labeled buttons. Now, I admit some of them I understand. For example, that one does something with the speedometer. There's the heated seat, another heated seat. The one on the right, what do you think that does? Wrong, it opens the glove box. Now the one on the right is easy. It locks and unlocks the doors, but the one on the left, what could that possibly do? It raises the spoiler? Wrong, it opens the trunk. Although I have no idea what it's really trying to symbolize. On this side, the buttons are labeled a lot more obviously, and there's even a little coin tray that could be useful for tolls. Good thinking, Lotus. Now, the gauge cluster in this car is pretty normal, but there's one unusual feature that I kind of like. If you scroll through the info screens enough, you'll eventually get to something marked alternative speed. Is that some cruise control feature? No, it's just your speed in kilometers per hour. Now, here's one of my favorite quirks about this car that the owner just told me. Power folding mirrors are optional in this car from the factory, and they're an expensive option, $450. But here's the quirk. Lotus builds every Evora with the motor for the power folding mirrors, just not the switch. So, if you have an Evora and you want to activate your power folding mirrors, just order the Ford Focus power mirror switch from a European model Ford Focus. You just call up a dealer in Great Britain, order it, they ship it to you, you install it, and suddenly your Evora has power folding mirrors. And you didn't pay $450 for it, you paid 12 bucks for the switch and then some more for shipping. But the other thing about the Evora is it's not just quirky and weird, it actually has a lot of the features that you'd expect from a nice sports car. I once owned a Lotus Elise, the smaller model, it's more hardcore and serious and it didn't have anything, it barely had a radio. This thing's not like that at all. There are, for example, power windows, and I've already covered the power mirrors. There's beautiful leather upholstery with Recaro sports seats. There's even cruise control. Cruise control on a Lotus. There's air conditioning. 
And surprisingly enough, it actually works. There's a navigation system, which illustrates the Lotus as a Formula One car. There's a display that shows your trip distance, your range, and even your average fuel consumption. It has heated seats, and they actually work. Up front, there are even headlight washers. Now with all that said, I think Lotus went overboard in one little aspect in terms of trying to make this car luxurious and everyday usable, and that's the back seats. Yes, that's right. This car has back seats, even though it's three inches shorter than a Porsche Cayman. Now, I often try to climb into back seats in my videos for comedic effect, especially when they're really tiny, but these are beyond even me. There's no way I can get back there. With that said, the owner of this car tells me he uses them to reliably transport his five-year-old son with no problem. So the Evora is a lot more unusual and unique than your typical everyday Corvette or Porsche that you see all over the place. But we knew that, it's British. More importantly, how does a Camry powered sports car drive? And it instantly just feels like a more like, like stable, like legitimate automobile than the Elise. The Elise always felt like it was one step ahead of like a go-kart. I love the mechanical feel of the shifter. That's a, that's a Lotus classic. I can't believe this is the V6 and I can't believe it comes out of a Toyota. Nobody's ever had that much, that much acceleration in a Toyota. That's crazy. You know, you just struggle to believe that this is a Toyota Camry engine. But here's the thing, this car's supercharged. So it has 345 horsepower, which is about 70, 80 more horsepower than the V6 Camry has. Um, the V6 Camry, by the way, is not a slow car. It does 0 to 60 in like six seconds, and that's on the Camry body. You put it in a vehicle that weighs 3,000 pounds, put it in the middle, and then you supercharge it, and suddenly you're not screwing around anymore. I always felt that the Elise was just sort of cobbled together. This thing doesn't feel like that as much. There's no like weird squeaks and, and creaks and that kind of thing. Wow, quick to rev, very quick to rev. Not much rear visibility out there, huh? The engine cover ends up blocking what about half of the incredibly tiny rear window that exists. <laughs> Sitting here at a stoplight, it feels very smooth. There's no rumbling. There's no like weird things making noise like they shouldn't be. I'm kind of surprised by that, honestly, because my Elise experience was not like that. With the Elise, you had to really ring it up. That was the whole point of that car. You had to really get it high in the rev range in order to really get into the power. This car, I mean, just a little stab of the throttle and you're really moving. One of, the, one of the best things about it, if I were to own one of these, is that I, I'm not like worried with every gear change, whatever, that like I'm gonna screw it up, right? Because it's a Camry, v, like the parts are available, part, the engine's available. If you want to replace the whole motor, that's doable. I think one of the smartest things Lotus did was putting this engine inside this car. I think it's preserved the car's resale value, and I think it's made this car like not scary to people on the used market. Great hole in this corner, that's really good. Big sweeper, feels very stable. We're not going crazy speed, but you can just tell it's very flat. It feels just like a big Elise, which is I guess what they were kind of going for. Uh, it feels fairly comfortable. The, the Elise, you were very compact in the driver's seat. You were sitting there and it was very, very tight. You don't feel like that in this car. It's, it's not really that tight. It actually feels fairly comfortable. I have a lot of room. Now, one of the things the owner explained to me, he came out of an Exige for this car, and, and this car is obviously a lot more drivable and normal. And he explained to me like a spectrum. It's kind of interesting. And on one end, you have a car you passionately love, and on the other end, something you passionately hate. And the Exige was sort of both. And, uh, and he wanted something a little bit more tolerable, and this is that. It's not a car that you're gonna maybe have the crazy passionate feelings about because it's not like a dedicated car. You really only get those when you have like a dedicated track car like the Elise. But it provides maybe 80 or 90% of those feelings. But most importantly, it's something you don't have to just hate when you're driving. You don't have to just sit there and go, oh, I can't believe I'm driving this thing again. I really want something more comfortable. So that's the Evora. It's quirky, it's cool, it's reliable. I think it's gorgeous. It drives well, and here's the kicker. There are currently more than 40 of these for sale on AutoTrader across the country for less than $60,000. And they're not really losing that much value either, which makes them kind of a bargain. If you're shopping for a sports car, the Evora ought to be on your shopping list. I bet you never thought something with a Toyota Camry engine could be so appealing.